can't escape now. Ole telling us about, uh, because you've told all the members of our family, my brother Jack and Bobby and uh, all of my sisters, while you were dressing them magnificently, you, about uh, your, uh, your own past association with the Soviet Union, the, the blood that runs through your veins. And well, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I want to get it, it exact this time. You can get it exact. <laughs> you think that I would, would and not tell you the complete truth? Well, uh, my grandfather, Arthur Cassini, the, the signatory of the Treaty of Portsmouth, uh, the sig at the end of the Russian-Japanese War, was for uh, 12 years ambassador of Russia in the United States under McKinley and Roosevelt. Uh -huh. My mother was the hostess of the Russian embassy. And of course, although I am an American 100% now, uh, there is some flow of Russian blood. Uh -huh. And it, it, it's a, with a special interest that I'm asking you this question because to me, Gorbachev is a man of mystery, a man that is more Western appearing than the Asiatic Russian type that we are uh, readily accepted for so long or not accepted. So I would like so much to hear from you. What is your uh, feeling about Gorbachev the man and Gorbachev the man of the moment for Russia and maybe because of that the man that we should bank on in our relationship with Russia? Well, let me go back uh, a little bit in, in history. Um, one of the things that uh, President was Kennedy was proudest of he was signing the uh, the agreement with the Soviet Union limiting nuclear explosions in in outer space. The thing that was interesting about uh, that whole negotiation was that uh, it existed or took place only about seven months after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. And at the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis, there was the real danger of, of nuclear exchange and real confrontation. Uh, so at a time we had a president that uh, stood up uh, to the uh, Soviet Union, but uh, was willing to make progress, to limit arms uh, control, to make uh, agreements in the area of arms uh, control. I think that's uh, an important, uh, an important lesson. Yeah. You know, one can be strong, and yet uh, one can be willing to uh, negotiate in areas which are consistent with our own national security, but may be of interest uh, to the uh, Soviet Union. And over the period of uh, the last 40 years, we've had remarkable progress by Republican and Democratic presidents. Uh, we've, I don't believe that we've made the progress that could have been made in, uh, in recent times under Mr. Gorbachev. Um, I had uh, two long visits with uh, Mr. Brezhnev, um, 1974, again in 1978. I believe that we could have made more progress in the area of arms control in that area uh, with him and uh, had a long visit with uh, Mr. Gorbachev. I uh, believe that Mr. Gorbachev is a committed Marxist. I believe that he can, believes that uh, he can make the Soviet system work better with better administrators who are more efficient, less corrupt. I believe that he's going to challenge the West, but I think he's a practical a human being who is interested in trying to find common paths towards limiting the nuclear arms race. And I think the challenge of American leadership is to challenge him to see whether those are real or not. He's been uh, gaining a lot of momentum in Europe, in other countries that are important to us, and uh, the, he is a consummate uh, politician and, and a very, it seems to me, from my perspective, a very able man who is really challenging us because he doesn't have the mask of the the old Russian uh, Aparyachnik who is always there with a scowl. He's just a Western looking man with an open face, dressing in, uh, fairly well with a pretty wife, and uh, who gives a, a pretty good message. Well, we, we um, shouldn't be deceived by appearances, but uh, we have to be serious uh, in dealing you know, with our adversary. Um, we have to judge from experience and but not be unwilling to challenge the moment and challenge uh, the time and I believe we are missing important opportunities but I think uh, we also uh, don't want to be uh, you know uh, uh, 
overly influenced by platitudes and uh, so press releases and, yeah. and rhetoric. I think so we have to be hard-nosed because you're dealing with the most important issues, which are our national security. I don't think those are inconsistent. I think uh, one can be, uh, you know, tough without being mean-spirited, and uh, one can be resolute, and one can be looking for ways of trying to move both countries away from the possibilities of nuclear confrontation. And we shouldn't... Uh, uh, I, I hope you have an opportunity to sit down with him for dinner, uh, Oleg. <laughs> <laughs> Send me to Gulag, number two. I don't but, think uh, so. But, uh, you know, that would be a, an interesting conversation well, as well. Well, the trip to Ireland is something that now I want you to tell me about. Well, I think, uh, Oleg, um, there's, I'm sure you remember, and since you raised it at uh, this time, this was uh, perhaps the, uh, the moment in terms of President Kennedy's presidency that uh, was the most joyous and perhaps uh, personally the, the, uh, the, the happiest, those wonderful days that he spent in Ireland. Uh, he remembered uh, his first visit to Ireland just after he had been elected to Congress. He went over there. Nobody knew who John Kennedy, Congressman John Kennedy, hitchhiked around the countryside. And it was, he had a wonderful experience at that time, always remembered it, talked about it. And when he came back, he sort of contrasted his first trip and going back as president of the United States. Uh, after he got back, uh, we all went up to uh, Cape Cod for the weekend and be with our parents. and. As uh, usual, we go to a different mem family member's house each night of the weekend. So the first night we were over at his house, and usually he had, you know, what, whatever was going on, it was in his house, obviously. So uh, the, the, after dinner, he said, would say, the, uh, whoever would like to stay and see the, uh, a movie, and so whatever the movies, and each of the networks had done a half-hour program on President Ken Kennedy's trip to Ireland. So everybody said, oh, we want to do it, the highlights of the trip. So. First uh, half hours, NBC, ABC, CBS. And the second night, we went to my brother Bob's house. Afterwards, he said, does anybody want to come back to the movie? And everyone said, what's the movie tonight? Well, he said, we thought we'd look at the trip to Ireland again. <laughs> so about six members of the family came back to that night. The last night, we had dinner at my house. And so at the end, uh, everybody, uh, my brother Jack said, well, does anybody want to come back to see the movie? And they said, what are they? And he said, the trip to Ireland. Everyone <laughs> groaned on that. It ended up that just uh, my brother Jack and I back there watched the uh, and by this time, both he remembered the trip and knew each of the little moments and pointed out the little touchings of the people gathering with flowers or little memorable times, little touching moments. It was uh, something that was uh, very, very, uh, very uh, special. Very and, uh, something that uh, meant so much to, uh, uh, to all of us. Oleg, we've been glad to have you here this evening. We, uh, Thank you, Senator. As, as always, we have... Um, uh, enjoy many uh, many dinners uh, with you. Usually we have all, lots of members of the Kennedy family around. Uh, too often it's just around a birthday or some other kind of family uh, celebration. So it's nice to welcome you here to uh, Washington. It's been a very uh, full day in the nation's capital uh, with all of the kinds of hearings and debates and discussions. But uh, as you well know, uh, you're always uh, welcome here and all the members of our family always consider you as family. So uh, we Thank hope, you, you, hope you come back, and if all of your television cameras want to come back, we'll welcome them, too. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good to have you here. Well, the senator, in his parting words, invited me to come any time I wanted again. And this was, to me, a very charming invitation, because there's nothing I like better. I spent a, a marvelous evening, and I must mention that the food was excellent, too. It was terrific, and that uh, open arm invitation was heartwarming to me. I hope you enjoyed it too. Next on A and E. The North Sea becomes a fiery battleground as the British and German fleets clash on World War One. <laughs>